right, so test tomorrow is on 4.1 through 4.3. Make sure you know all the material from the 4.1 and 4.2 quiz. Know the stuff from that review. Know the stuff from this review and the word problems that we did in class yesterday. All right. I'm going to do just a few from the first part, but if you have questions on one that I skip, I'll go back to it. But I want to do number five. So we have to find all six trig functions for our triangle here for theta. I need to also know what all three sides of my triangle are. How can I find the missing side? Pythagorean theorem. So my Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared where a squared and b squared have to be the sides, the legs, and c squared is the hypotenuse. So it's, the hypotenuse is not given, so I plug in the other two as my a and b. Square root 5 squared plus 5 squared is equal to c squared. What is square root 5 squared? Just 5 plus 5 squared would be 25 is equal to c squared. So c squared is 30. Take the square root. Can I simplify the square root of 30? No. We can break it down. Our factors would be 3 and 10, 2 and 5. We don't have any pairs, so we just leave it as the square root of 30. So that's our hypotenuse. So it helps to label what your opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse are. We just found our hypotenuse. That would be our h. What is square root 5? Opposite or adjacent? Opposite, and 5 would be adjacent. So to find my six trig functions, I have sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. And then it helps to know SOCOTOA. So which trick function gets what? So first sine. Sine would be opposite over hypotenuse. So that would be square root 5 over square root 30. How can I simplify this? I can't leave a square root in the denominator. So what do I need to do? Rationalize. So I multiply what? Square root 30. Whatever is in the denominator, that's what gets multiplied to the top and the bottom. So the bottom turns into just 30. What do I do with the square root 5 times the square root of 30? Multiply them together. So that would be the square root of 150. And let's see, can I simplify the square root of 150? My factors are 5 and 30. Two factors of 30 would be 5 and 6. And then 6 would be 2 and 3. So I have a pair of 5s. So 5 comes to the outside. So it would be 5 square root 6 over 3. Can I simplify this anymore? Oh, yeah. We divide them both by 5. So 5 goes into the 5 and 30. We'd be left with 6 on the bottom. So it's square root 6 over 6. Awesome. All right, I'm going to go and find the reciprocal of it, so cosecant. So I'm just going to flip the sign. So it would be square root 30 over square root 5. <coughs> Another way we can simplify this instead of rationalizing, if I have a square root over a square root, I can combine them together and make it square root 30 over 5. which this simplifies to square root 6. So you could multiply the top and the bottom by square root 5 and simplify just like you did before, or you could just combine them and divide. So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that would be 5 over square root 30. I have to rationalize, so I multiply the top and the bottom by square root 30. 5 square root 30 over 30, and this simplifies to square root 30 over 6. Secant is the reciprocal, so I'm just going to flip the original one, so that would be square root 30 over 5. 
and then tangent is opposite over adjacent, so square root 5 <laughs> over 5. Cotangent, I need to flip it, so it'd be 5 over square root 5, and then we need to rationalize. So multiply the top and the bottom by square root 5. We get 5 square root 5 over 5, and the 5's cancel, so it would just be square root 5. All right, let's take a look at number 4. So number 4 is a 30-60-90 triangle. The important part here is to find the side length. So we're going to call them X and Y. So we know in a 30, 60, 90, the side opposite of the 30 is just A. The side opposite of 60 would be A square root 3. And the side opposite, or the hypotenuse, the side opposite the right angle would be 2A. So make sure you know your 30, 60, 90. How can I solve for A? So down here, I know that A square root 3 is equal to 9. So I'm going to divide by square root 3 to find what just A is. So A would be 9 over square root 3. But we have to rationalize because we don't like fractions. We don't like square roots in the denominator of our fraction, so multiply the top and the bottom by square root 3. So 9 square root 3 over 3, which would just be 3 square root 3. Yes? So just A would be 3 square root 3. So that would be what our X is here. Now, to find our hypotenuse, to find Y, I multiply a times 2, so it would be 2 times 3 square root 3. How do I multiply this? What would I get? Just 2 times 3. So multiply the whole numbers together, so that would be 6 square root 3. So I know this question asks for the 6 trig functions, but it's going to be more important to find the two missing sides. Because in a 30, 60, 90, or 45, 45, It'll only give you one, and you can't use Pythagorean theorem with just one. You have to know your special right triangles. So in case we forgot, I'm going to write them down for you. So in a 30, 60, 90 triangle, opposite of the 30 will just be our A. You can call it A, X, S, whatever you want, but it, that's just our base where we start. Opposite of the 60 is a square root 3, and then our hypotenuse is 2a. And in a 45, 45, 90 triangle, the two sides would just be our a, and the hypotenuse is a square root 2. So it gave us this angle, which was the 60, so 60 would be our theta. So to find the sine of theta... Which here, it'd just be the sine of 60, so we could almost just use our unit circle to find it. So that's why it kind of doesn't make sense to find our trig functions, but it's better to find the sides. But sine of our theta, which is 60, would be opposite. So that would be 9 over the hypotenuse, 6 square root 3. And then you'd have to simplify. So it would end up being... Multiply the top and the bottom by square root 3. We get 9 square root 3 over 18. So square root 3 over 2. Which any time you take the sine of 60 degrees, it's going to be square root 3 over 2. That's what our unit circle says. All right, let's take a look at number 6. So here it gives me one of my trig functions, and I have to find the other 5. So I need to still know my SOHCAHTOA. Cosecant goes with sine, so cosecant is the reciprocal, so that would be hypotenuse over opposite. So how would I make this 3 a fraction? 3 over 1. So my hypotenuse would be 3, and my opposite is 1. So I'm going to draw my triangle. My hypotenuse is 3. My theta is down here. My opposite is 1. How do I find the missing side? 
Pythagorean theorem. So 1 squared plus, I'll call it x squared, is equal to 3 squared. 3 is my hypotenuse, so that's why it's equal to the 3 squared. So 1 plus x squared is equal to 9. Subtract 1 on both sides. So x squared is equal to 8. Take the square root. So x is equal to, how can I simplify the square root of 8? 2 square root of 2. Because it breaks down into 2 and 4. 4 breaks down into 2 and 2. So circle my pairs of 2s. That comes to the outside, but I still have a 2 on the inside. So x is 2 square root 2, which this is my adjacent. So now I want to find my remaining trig functions. So I need sine. Sine is just the reciprocal of cosecant. They go together. So instead of 3 over 1, it'd be 1 over 3. Cosine of theta would be adjacent over hypotenuse. So that is square root 2 square root 2 over 3. And then tangent would be opposite over adjacent. So 1 over 2 square root 2. Whenever we have a square root in the denominator, we have to rationalize. So multiply the top and the bottom by square root 2. So we get square root 2 over 1. How do I multiply these on the bottom together? So it would be 2 times 2, because two square, square root 2 times square root 2 would be 2. And 2 times 2 would be 4. And then let's find the reciprocals. Cosecant's already given, so I need secant and cotangent. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so that would be 3 over 2 square root 2. Got to rationalize, so multiply the top and the bottom by square root 2. We got 3 square root 2 over 4. And then for cotangent, I just need to flip tangent. So I'm going to flip this one before I rationalized it. So it would be 2 square root 2 over 1, which is just 2 square root 2. So just for extra practice, let's say I was given a triangle. My 60 degree angle is here, and opposite of the 60 would be let's say 8. And this is x and y. So what would I need to do to find my two missing sides? <clears throat> Perfect. So opposite of the 60 is our a square root 3. Opposite of the 30 would just be a, and then our hypotenuse is 2a. So since I have that a square root 3 is equal to 8, that's the one equation that I'm going to work with to find what a is. So to solve for a, what would I need to do? Divide by square root 3. So a is equal to 8 over square root 3. I can't leave the square root in the bottom, so I'm going to rationalize. So this would be 8 square root 3 over 3. So what is 8 square root 3 over 3? <coughs> Opposite of the 60 was 8. That was given. We found that a is 8 square root 3 over 3, so that means just a is that. So x is equal to 8 square root 3 over 3. How would I find y? Multiply by 2. y is 2 times a, so it would be 2 times 8 square root 3 over 3. So that would make this 16 square root 3 over 3. And that would be y. Let's do one more of the special right triangles. So let's say I was given a 45, 45, 90, and it gave me one of the side lengths as 4. 
and it asks for x and y. What would x be? x is also 4 because we know our two legs of the triangle are the same. What would my hypotenuse be? 4 square root 2. Awesome. Let's do one more. So let's say I was given a 30, 60, 90, and I was given the side opposite of the 30 as 10. What would my side opposite of the 60 be? 10 square root 3. And my hypotenuse? 20. Perfect. So not always as they're... Are they going to be as challenging as this? It's usually just difficult when it gives you the side opposite of the 60 because you have to divide to find like what your just A is. But it give, if it gives you the side opposite of the 30, you just have to multiply by square root 3 and multiply by 2 because this would be our A because opposite of the 30 is just A. Opposite of the 60 is A square root 3 and the hypotenuse is 2A. So we just take our A, multiply by square root 3, Multiply it by 2 to find the missing sides. Next, let's look at our linear speed of the clock questions. So for these questions, it helps to know that little chart that I made in the notes. No, you have to know them. So the types of revolutions you'll have will be a quarter, a half, three quarters, or full. So like you have three of them here. And then just know which... Uh, theta goes with it because whenever you do these types of questions the formula for linear speed <coughs> is r times theta over time <coughs> so the r will be given theta will be one of these because theta has to be in radians And then time will just depend on which type of revolution you have. How far around the circle are you going? How many seconds is that? So for question number eight, it says that our radius is 1.72 and we have half a revolution. So we are looking at this one here. <coughs> So my formula again is r times theta over time. So r was given, that's 1.72. What would be my theta for half a circle? Pi over how many seconds is half a clock? 30. And then I multiply this all together. We get 0.18. And this doesn't have a unit here, but it will tomorrow. Let's just assume that it is centimeters. So this would be centimeters per second. All right, let's look at number nine. We'll do one more. So again, we're using our formula, r times theta over time. So my radius was given, that's 9.48. At three quarters of a revolution, what is my theta? Three pi over two. So I'm looking at the three quarters of a clock, so that would be three pi over two. And then what would my time be? 45 seconds. Then I'm just gonna multiply all of this in my calculator. So you should get 0 0.99. And then here it gives us centimeters, so centimeters per second. So know your arc length formula. So S is equal to R times theta. This is linear speed. One way you can remember these four things so if it tells you that it's a quarter revolution, look at your unit circle. When you go a quarter of the way, 
a quarter of the way, it would be pi over 2. When you go half, so half a revolution is pi. 3 quarters would be 3 pi over 2. And then a full circle is 2 pi. So that's just kind of a little helpful to help you remember. And then for the time, think about in seconds. All the way around a clock would be 60 seconds. So halfway would be 30. So just think about it that way. So number 11 says a ladder is laying against the side of a three-story house. So I have a house, a ladder is laying against it. A roofer measures the angle of depression from the roof line to the sidewalk to be 58 degrees. So angle of depression is from the horizontal line down. So that would be 58. The base of the ladder is 65 feet from the base of the house. So down here, we'd be at 65 feet. And how long is the ladder? So what in my picture here is the ladder? The hypotenuse. That's x, because the ladder we said was leaning against the house. Now, I don't have an angle in my triangle, but do I know an angle in my triangle? Which one? 58 where? At the bottom, 58. If we had an angle of depression outside... The angle of elevation inside is going to be the same thing. So I can use 58 as my theta. 65 is opposite or adjacent? 65 would be adjacent, and x is the hypotenuse. Which trig function uses adjacent and hypotenuse? Cosine. So I'm taking the cosine of what? Cosine of 58. You are always taking the trig function of the angle... So cosine of 58 is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, so 65 over x. What do I do to solve for x when x is on the bottom? Multiply by x on both sides, and then I would have to divide by cosine of 58. So I have x times cosine of 58 is equal to 65. I'm dividing by the cosine. So I would need to put 65 divided by cosine of 58 in the calculator. So you should get 122.66. And what unit am I talking about? Feet. Which I'm not sure if it specifies on the test or not. I'll double check. But I'll tell you tomorrow if we take the test tomorrow. You can round to the whole number, so we can make it 123 feet, 120 feet, 3 feet. <coughs> Again, for these types of questions, make sure your calculator is in degrees. If your calculator is in radians, you're going to get a different answer, and it's going to be wrong. Make sure your calculator is in degrees, and today would be a good time to double check and ask me. All right, let's look at number 12. Bob's brothers, brothers Bob and Tom Katz buy a tent that has a center pole at 6.2 feet high. If the sides of the tent are supposed to make 50 degree angle with the ground, how wide is the tent? So here I have a tent with the center pole at 6.25. <coughs> the side of the tent is supposed to make a 50 degree angle with the ground. So that would be 52 degrees, 50 degrees. I'm trying to find how wide my tent is. So what would be x? Where would be x? Adjacent to 50, the base. But it's just half of it. Because we deal with right triangles with our trig functions. This is right triangle trig. So we got to work with the right triangle first. So I'm going to find x, but ultimately I'm going to have to multiply it by 2 to find what this side is also. But I have my right triangle here. 50 is my theta, so x would be adjacent. And what is 6.25? Opposite. Which trig function uses opposite and adjacent? Tangent. So I'm taking the tangent of what? 50. It's always the trig function of the angle. So tangent of 50 is equal to 6.25 over x. 
x is on the bottom, so I have to multiply both sides by x. And then I would divide by tangent of 50 to move that to the other side. So it would be 6.25 divided by tangent of 50. And then we would have to put this into the calculator. So we should get 5.24. Is that our answer? What do I have to do? Multiply it by 2, because that's just half of the width of the tent. So I multiply it times 2. And I get 10.4, which would just round to 10. So 10 feet. So looking at 14. A five foot tall bird watcher is standing 65 feet from the base of a large tree. So I have a five foot tall person. And they are standing 65 feet from the base of a large tree. The person measures the angle of elevation to a bird on the top of the tree to be 71.5 degrees. How tall is the tree? So the person is measuring the angle of elevation. So we know our angle of elevation is from the horizontal line up. So this would be 71.5. How tall is the tree? So the tree would be our X. All right, any questions on the picture that I drew? If it gives you the height of the person, you have to use it in the question. So some of the other ones where it said like, for the one above that they're walking to, and it's an angle formed with the sidewalk. Like most of the time it'll be with the ground, but sometimes it'll give you the height of the person. Then it's kind of from their eyesight is where the angle of elevation is. Does that answer your question? We have another question. Go ahead. So how can I find x? What would I need to do first? Well, my tree is this whole thing. x is the whole tree, which is what I'm trying to find. But my right triangle only uses half the tree. So I would call this y. Using my right triangle here. So I can use tangent. Because I have opposite, my y would be opposite, and 65 is the adjacent. So tangent of 71.5 would be equal to y over 65. And then whatever y is, because y is just this height, whatever we find for y, we're just add 5 to find the whole height of the tree. So to solve for y, I have to multiply both sides by 65. So y is equal to 65 times the tangent of 71.5. Got to put that into the calculator. So y, we get 194.2. But we're going to round to the whole number, so 194. So how do I find the height of the whole tree? Add 5 to it. because we just found what this length was, but my tree is the entire thing. So I have to add five, so it would be 199 what feet. A very tall tree. So 15 says, at a point 200 feet from the base of the building, the angle of elevation to the bottom of a smokestack is 35 degrees. So I'm 200 feet from the base of a building. angle of elevation to the bottom of the smokestack. So let's say my smokestack is on top of the building here. To the bottom of the smokestack would be 35 degrees. And then the angle to the top of the smokestack is 53 degrees. So this whole angle here is 53. It asks for just the height of the smokestack. So I'm just finding this height. I'll call it x. But this triangle that was formed is not a right triangle, so I can't just find x. What would I have to do first? I 
I can find the smokestack and the building. So what would be my theta if I'm looking for the smokestack and the building? 53, because this whole triangle has the angle of 53. So I'm going to call this Y, the smokestack and the building, the whole thing. So Y would be opposite, 200 would be adjacent. So which trig function uses opposite and adjacent? Tangent. So tangent of 53 is equal to opposite over adjacent, so Y over 200. Multiply both sides by 200. <coughs> So y is equal to 200 times tangent of 53. So we get y is 265. So that is the height of the smokestack and the building. But the question just asked for the height of the smokestack. So what would I need to do next? Perfect. I want to subtract the height of the building. So next, I want to find just the height of the building, which I'll call Z. So what would be my theta if I'm trying to find just the height of the building? 35. So here I would take the tangent of 35, and that's equal to Z over 200. So Z would be equal to 200 times the tangent of 35, because I have to multiply 200 on both sides. So then I put this into the calculator. So we get 140. And then Bianca said I need to take the whole thing and subtract just the height of the building. So the whole thing was 265 minus the height of the building, which was 140. So that would mean my smokestack is 125. Feats.